Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build a whiteboard solution. Instead of using the Canvas API directly, we're going to use a nice and simple JavaScript library called Fabric.js. If you haven't heard of Fabric.js, that's fine. Fabric.js is a very simple JavaScript Canvas library that builds on top of the features of the Canvas API. You have access to things like selecting objects, and it builds the bounding box for whatever object you select. It can work with SVG directly. You can resize, change color, add text. You can edit in real time and make a whole bunch of changes. To build this solution, I'm going to be using Next.js for React. And then I'm going to be importing the Fabric.js library on top of it. To style things up a little bit, we're going to make use of Tailwind. I'm going to quickly rush through how to set up Next.js and add Tailwind to Next.js. And then we're going to go ahead and build this solution. Feel free to skip ahead to the chapter where we have the solution directly if you already know how to set up Next.js and Tool. In order to install Next.js, I'm going to be running npx command, npx create next app, and I'm going to be using period so that it puts everything in this folder we already have. That should take a couple of seconds and be done. Now that we've installed Next.js, the next step will be to install Tailwind. Tailwind has a bunch of dependencies that it requires in order to work properly. We're going to install all of them in one line. So to install that, we'll run npm install. You could use npm i dash d. We would say tailwind CSS, post CSS, and we also need auto prefixer. And if I have that spelled correctly, we install all of that. Done. Now that that's done, the next step in configuring, in configuring the wind is to run npx the wind initialize init, and this is going to create the tailwind config.js and the post CSS config file. And we need to make a tiny little change here. So, right now, tailwind doesn't know what path to target, and we're going to tell it what um, sort of files to target. And to do that, we're going to say every file in under pages, um, the directory for sub, and we say JS, TS, um, JSX files, TSX files, and we want to target those. And also, if we're, we're going to be making use of a components part, um, I like to put my components in the components folder, so I'm going to be targeting that also. And same thing that we did. Say JS, TypeScript, sex, and the TSX. And that, that is all we need to do on the Tailwind config file. So the next thing we need to do is to go to our styles, dot, um, styles folder, go to our globals.css. And what I like to do here is to import all the Tailwind files here. So we say at Tailwind, we call base. We're going to need that and we'll call tailwind components because we have some tailwind components and we'll call tailwind utility because we also need that and with this we should have tailwind pretty much set up if we go to our pages folder index.js we don't see our global.css code here but in the underscore app.js which is the root component for our app we have that referenced here and to get our app running, all we need to do is say npm run dev, and that should start running and point it to port 3000. And go to our browser, refresh. Yes, we have Tailwind running on um, our browser port 3000. And one thing we can do to confirm that our Tailwind CSS files um, work, our directives have been set, is we can go back to our index.js and let's make a change or we could add, let's say we added a div, I'll just add, add a div and I would say class name just to test that this works, I'll give it a width of 50 for example and I would say b the red 500 
and inside here i'm going to put a paragraph that says save that file and when we go back to our browser see that that is applied so we know that the wind is set up and running the next step would be to install our, our fabric js dependency and get it set up to build our whiteboard so in order to install fabric.js all we need to do is run npm install fabric and that should install fabric.js and if we look at our package.json we have fabric.js now that we have fabric.js set up all we need to do is to use it like i mentioned earlier i like to build my components in a component folder so i'm going to go ahead and make a folder called components and for this component folder we're going to make a file and we're going to call it we'll call it board.js and if you use one of the extensions you could run a react um, dot code to sort of set up a functional component for you so i would like to run refc and i have this functional arrow um, arrow class arrow function and once we import this to start making use of fabric js we just need to import um, fabric from fabric and that is all we need to have fabric um, from the documentation for fabric JS, to be able to use fabric JS, you need to make use of a canvas component so um, inside our div i'm going to be picking out board i'll just give it a bit of styling so that we can see it i'll say it should be container so it was container wrongly and let me know if you'd like me to do a tailwind deep dive just to show you how to set up tailwind and use tailwind it's pretty super fast for prototyping for building out real code without having to know a bunch of um, CSS. So I'll just do this because I know I'm going to be throwing this in another container later on. So, and the other thing I want to do is to create the canvas and I'll close it out here and we should be done. Something else I would like to do is <clears throat> because this is not, um, HTML, this is going to be React. I need to get a reference to my canvas. Usually, um, you could use an ID and reference it to an ID, but since we're writing React, um, why not get a ref? So I'll call this canvas ref. I haven't created this before. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to come at the top here. I know I'm going to need to make use of use ref. I need use ref. Um, I'm going to make use of use text. I'm going to make use of I would state at some point. Yeah, so these are the three things I'm going to need in. And for a start, all I need to do is say constant. We call it canvas ref, and we're going to say ref, and we're going to write this small. And that way we have relationship between our canvas and the reference so the next thing we would want to do is to initialize fabric i'm going to be doing this using um use effect just because we want this to be um initialized when the page is done set up and only done once um in the life cycle so i'm going to just make use of want this to only once and what we want to do is we're going to create a local variable here, we'll call it canvas, and we'll say this is equal to new fabric.canvas. Capital C yeah. Canvas. And all we need to get this going is we just pass the canvas ref. But we know a reference as current, it has other properties. So we're targeting the current, whatever is in the reference now. We can pass a bunch of options for now um, to this, but for a start, I wouldn't pass any option. Let's save this and let's go to the browser and see if we have this properly set up. So go back to the browser, refresh. Um, yes, we should um we shouldn't have anything running because we run our app again. We have npm run dev, and even if we run this, what we would get 
the, the original page that we had. And the reason for that is because in our pages file index.js, we're not making use of anything that we've created. So the board is what we make. I'm going to take out all of this and I'm going to throw in board. Um, that's, that's going to import it and we're going to save. And when we save this and go back to the browser, refresh, we do have a blank page and that's because we, our canvas is supposed to be white by default or blank by default. So look at this to make sure that we have text here. We to add this, we can call this our whiteboard, for example, save this. So we have our whiteboard showing in the browser now. And the next thing I would like to show is how we can go ahead and use the properties of the canvas itself. So the first property that we can set while initializing the canvas, and mind you, these properties can be set at any point in time. But the first property we're going to be setting is the background color and a red background color. And if we add this and save and go back to our browser, thus we have the canvas as red. To be able to show how powerful Fabric JS is, I'm going to be adding a component to um, the canvas. I'm going to be adding, let's add a green circle, for example. And in that green circle, what we want to do is select that circle, drag it around the canvas, and see the bounds of our canvas just to show how easy Fabric JS makes it for us. So to do that, I'm going to be making a new constant. I'll call it circle. And to initialize a new circle, simple as fabric.circle. It's always everything in fabric JS sort of takes in property uh, extra option. So one of the options circles have is a radius and for radius I'm going to say 20 for example um, it takes in a fill and let's give it a green fill and it also takes in um, a left position which is we could position this circle anywhere we want to and that's I'll put it at 50 points. And let's say top is at 50 points. And I'm just using random points to show this. And something else we could do is we need to do is we say canvas.add. So we're adding this circle to our canvas. And what will happen is when our canvas is initialized, it comes with a green circle in it. After adding the save and we go back to our browser. And of course, we do have a circle. But then um, if you look at the circle, we're able to select that circle, we're able to move around with it, play around and drag it where we want. So out of the box, Fabric JS just makes it easy to throw things into the canvas and play with it as much as we want. The next thing um, we would like to pass um, into this is a width. So um, as we can see, our canvas is really small. Um, I could pass a width and say, 1290 and for height say 400 just so that um don't have something to do and if we add this and go back to our browser we can, as we can see we have our browser and we have the canvas big enough to accommodate that we can move around pretty much very well so that is all um about showing you that we can add objects, we can play around those objects. To start building our whiteboard, uh, Fabric JS makes this super, super easy to do. And to do that, all we need to do is go set um, another property called is drawing mode. And if we say is drawing mode equal to true, what we are going to do, what that is going to do is that turns our entire canvas. And what happens with that is that we're able to sort of um, drag around. Hold on, hit I need to refresh. And if we refresh, as you can see, I can write on the canvas. And basically, with five lines of code, uh, five lines of initialization, we have a whiteboard done. The other step I'm going to be going through is basically how to customize this, set it up, change color of the pen, and just play around React and see how we can customize this to make it look real good and useful.
So we'll go back to our code. Um, we don't need the circle anymore. So I'm going to take this all out. And we can see that even without the background color red, I'm going to change this back to white or gray, for example. Um, and if we leave his drawing mode equal to true, back to the browser, we should still be able to write in the browser. So um, applications you could think of would be things around, um, say you wanted to take in signature for um, an application, you wanted to build a custom signature pad. Um, this is definitely something we could use to sign. And what you could do is you could export what they've signed here to an image and attach it to a PDF file. Uh, you could use fabric.js to build something like Canva and have your own uh, editing suite. Um, let me know if you want me to do a course on that. Recently, I worked on a project where we had to review an editing suite where um, it looked very similar to all the features that Canva did. I could do a quick video about setting that up and creating some of the components there. So let me know if you'd like to see videos like that. And there, there are countless of applications you could use this for. So you could use your own version of Photoshop, for example, um, throwing the picture into the canvas, edit it, add filters, and what, um, whatever comes to your mind. You could really, really play with this as much as you want. So um, that's that. The other thing I wanted to show is um, I'm going to bring back the circle we deleted. So I'm just going to go back a bit. And something else I wanted to show you is that you could customize your selection color. Say we wanted when we selected something for it to be purple in color, for example, we have the option to do that. And if we go to our browser, refresh, we have uh, that component. But when we select it, um, I'm not able to select because I have his drawing mode turned on. So um, I need to go back here, take out his drawing mode turned on, and see this file. Go back to our browser, refresh, and it once again. So um, you could choose the selection color. And I didn't also show you this, but you could resize. And because our circle is sort of like a vector object, whenever we resize uh, the quality, we don't lose quality and gets better for whatever size we increase scale it to. Um, something else I also wanted to show is we could add things like um, the selection width. So say we want our selection width be really, really big. So selection like this, um, we can say we want it to be four. And what that gives us, back to the browser, back to this, and sort of, increases the um, well, so when we select have very big and we also see that the color is purple so that's that about selection so in order to build our whiteboard solution um popular feature of whiteboards is that we're able to increase the width of our pen too so we're able to make it more thicker, more, um, a little bit less thick, light, and we could set the width as we want. Um, some people might do presets, um, but for our own case, we're going to do a range, a slider where you could scroll and increase how thick you want your width. So in order to do that, um, we don't need a circle anymore, so I'm going to take that out. Um, something we're going to be needing is we're going to add uh, a div here and in that div I was going to make another div to hold um, a label and what we call that label and we're going to have an input close that and basically our input is going to be of type range and why we want the range is we want a slider that we can and on change so whenever that slider is said what we want at that event and pass that event to a change pen with function that we so, so once pass it to change pen we and we'll just set um, the target of value so whatever value we change it that's what we'll send to the file function and for our value let's say it's going to be stored in function um, in a variable called pen and we want to have a minimum width 
from it going to it or going to zero. I want a minimum weight of one, for example, and a maximum say 30, for example. So now that we have all of this set, um, something we could also do is um for visual cue, we could also spare pen with so um pen with pen pen I'll be sort of changing. So you get the idea. So um we section follow selection here with all of this out and we created a variable called pen with here. I'm going to throw this into an state so to that was pen weight and we have the setup for it so pen weight see state and let's just say by default three um something else we so need to do is if you notice um our canvas constant that it only exists inside our user text so also put that in state so that we could manipulate it and have it saved um somewhere in state so that we can play with it and pass it around as we wish. Uh, set public canvas. And that's going to also have it this way. That means what we want to do immediately after initialization, we want to commit our canvas to state. And before I forget, we want to check that we have our canvas ref here. And but so we can start to create this function called change width. Simple constant change width um, arrow function. And now that we have this, what we want to do is um, this function making in a value here like we have here. We're expecting a target value and we say we're expecting a and we're going to check that our canvas is not and it's not. We're going to call a canvas API called drawing brush. So free drawing brush brush would set to do whatever we do. That's basically how you um set the width of the pen tool. So um because we're playing with states, we have to update our state uh, whatever we're changing it to. And I like to call the canvas dot render also um every time we make change to canvas we want to bind this um it works without it but um i i like to use this just to be safe um most times so once we do this um i think we have everything that i need to, um get this to work the only other thing i would do is i would close this as or a simple function here and this is not fabric js specific this is just me cleaning up my um clean this off and i think we should have everything to get this running so the browser refresh and yes we do have our pen width showing the initial width with 33 let's try it out so we're not able to right and the reason we're not able to do that is because we did not set our drawing mode to be true um set that back to our browser refresh this let's try to write yes we get this let's increase the width and see so yep and um let's use it a bit more and have it bigger and with this you already have <laughs> functional whiteboard in very little lines of code and all you have to do is style it as you want um, place it however you want and you know you're really onto something so to change the color um we could do something similar for the color also um the reason i did this is so that i could um, add another div here and basically similar thing i would copy paste and paste save some time there and what we want to do is say pen color for example and with here we say pen color and instead of range we say the color picker the only issue i have with the color picker is um, not all browsers support it and we come here and say instead of this we say change pen color and um 
I don't want to make you the for accent. In and for here we the pen color. And basically the same thing we did here, we can come here to be this for this pen color and the set pen color. And when we set our pen color, we could pick whatever color we want. Um, set it by default if we want that. And the other thing we need is change uh, constant, change pen color, and assume a color is going to be passed to us. And picking that color, the same thing we did up is we're going to check that our canvas and all and of exist what we want to do is paper fabric canvas and uh, same free drawing brush the only difference is we're saying color so we're changing color to this color and we can set end color to whatever color um, we've selected and pretty much the same thing and um, i believe that is all we need color so if we go back to this we see that by default it says that our color is red but our color isn't red and that's because we are not passing pen color as part of the option so, um really super easy to fix that we're saying red um here for pen color but the only place we're using pen color is the value and not in it so um that's easy to fix it should work um so that's um how to make a simple whiteboard. I'd like to show a couple more features of um uh, FabricJS, which is the ability to sort of download what you've done and um, maybe make a simple eraser. So I'll show you how you can manipulate making an eraser that you could sort of keep off what you if you made a piece um, FabricJS. Do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my style a bit. Um, just to use Tailwind in the first place, I'm going to use uh, this just a bit of cleanup so that I can put in a button and have everything in the flex uh, row space by four. That's round. Uh, for this div, we have a first name, flex, and so. If oh, I'd love to wrap this to it another and like that the school so it just has um does a bit e and you could also give this one style x two and pretty much um, so now we have a div wrapping this um first div the next thing i want to do is um create another div um i want to put my button here or i could create the button here and start this button so um for this button we want to download example and want to do one click, we would like to just call a function. Let's call this function load. And that uh, have type of button and pass here. And let's see. Background is the 600. Say on over, we want 
700 for example um let's keep the horizontal and vertical padding in we'll say horizontal six vertical three uh, let's see how this looks in the browser. Browser, yes, we have got it. Um, I don't like the text at the back, so text white. Browser, text. So we have um, our download. You'll be able to download. Let's write that download function. So we say constant download. And color what we want to the download board is so with fabric we can export the entire board to svg and to something called a data url which we can specify a format with png jpeg so um to export this as png the um png data and because our fabric canvas we're saving everything to it we say png canvas dot to data url and apg and the other thing we will create an anchor which is a trick I use um an anchor element the download link and JavaScript the create element um I just cheat my way around here so that I don't have to have lean element um, I can create this and destroy it, and nobody ever sees it. It just exists for a second here. And we could play around file names. We want to give it a file name, a bit of dynamic file name. Let's say whiteboard session. And this, um, to randomize this, the random dot string dot replace and replace dot with and after all we're done we we'll just append dot png which is the format we want to export it to and what we want to do is the yeah, download link will add the href and like you guessed href is going to be the png data and we'll say download link for download so um, we're going to pass in the file name and we're going to click it. So every time you do this, we're going to create a anchor element, add something to it, and click on it. All in touch up a button. And this is how you make a downloadable. So um, after doing this, I think that's all we need. If we go back to the browser itself and to make it more interactive, what we could do is go ahead, increase the pen size and the color and we try this something unique and we say download white spot and then browser what we should have is have what we saved that is exactly how you download so um like i mentioned previously the application for this is Endless, you could um, feature to take in signature, you could feature to take in um, input, um, you could use it to crop documents, scan, and, um, lots of other stuff. Let me know in the comments um, if there's any specific feature you'd like to build with this, and I that and show you how that's done. And if you have questions, uh, ask those in the comments. So before we round off um, this session, let's quickly add clear canvas and, and razor for this. So to do that, um, to clear canvas, let's say we want a way to get our canvas to default with a function called clear canvas. And basically, same thing we've done previously is we check if canvas this and all fabric canvas stuff there. Simple as that. The only concern here would be 
when we create something like this is if we've set a custom background color, clearing a canvas resets it back to the, the default color that um, comes with Fabric G. So um, show you what I mean. This function, the whiteboard, instead of indigo, uh, let's say red, have something different. Next is white. Go back to browser. Uh, see, have our white. We have this, for example, a clear whiteboard. It cleared it, but because we have a custom color and to show that we still have a canvas, I yeah, can still write here. And if we declare, it goes back to the. So uh, a trick or work around that is whenever we clear the canvas, we want to set back our um, default color. So whatever color we're working with, we set our background color to, um, since we're working with red, we can set it back to red. And that should pretty much that. So uh, that's back fresh. Change and clear whiteboard, play it and we have red. That's a trick to play it and keep the color. Obviously, we're using red here. It'll be nice if we come to the top here and uh, maybe set our. Ground color. For the background color, we could also hold it. Uh, nothing is stopping us from holding it. Or we could be getting this from some settings of our application. And that way, default background color, we pass it in here instead of using red. For example, as that's true here. And here we just call default background. It saves us. Uh, Time. The other thing I wanted to show was the eraser. So let's say eraser. Um, we're going to toggle. Eraser. And if you think about it, um, an eraser is basically a pen with um our background color. So if you understand what I mean, um, if you look at the page, we've written in black. If we want to clean it, we basically want to paint it over with our background color. That's um. How an eraser works. How an eraser will work digitally. And what we're going to do is um, for our eraser, we want to toggle, put it in a state, so on or off, if our eraser is selected or not. And um, a state really does that well for us. So we constant um, toggle. Razor, for example, and set toggle. Uh, state, and by default, we say false, right? So that's that. And when we go to this function, what we want to, we check that our canvas exists, then we'll check, um, are we in, this mode are we erasing something if we're erasing then change our pen color to whatever the initial pen color is so in this case for example we could say we want pen color to black uh, and when we do that we want to set toggle false <coughs> And if we, if we are not erasing, if it's false, what we want to do is we want to get our background color. So um, I, I could also show you, we, we already know our background color is red, so we could set it to red. We could just do something, change pen color and set it to default background color. And then we set our, 
this. So I have simple button, same thing. Instead of this, we so that we have different buttons. All this eraser, and you could do things like even change the icon, different icon for your eraser so that it looks um it's different and looks so what we could do is for toggle erase here go back to browser and i have eraser and what i can try to write something and eraser and you could see tiny lines of it facing which means i increase my pen width see me that's basically how it works and when we want when we're done erasing we click on erase again and we go back to writing um of course we could make the states show that this is toggled on or off we could use an icon to make it clear that we're performing an action simple way to do it is um here um in this object and what we want to check is if our toggle eraser is true then we know we're erasing so what we could do is a toggle eraser true what we want to do is say use and remove Just a simple model. Um, I got it wrong, so it's supposed to be uh, removed this way. Uh, browser and this is a is now and remove eraser means we're back to and so that's um how you use fabric chairs to create a whiteboard um like i mentioned earlier you could also use this same um framework or library something like canva it already has the selection so that means size you could use like adding text i didn't show that here um, let me know in the comments if it's something you're interested in seeing. Anna. Thank you for watching. And as always, if there's something else you'd like me to know how to do, please um, let me know. And if you find this channel helpful, like and subscribe.